Mashoko Tensei is the best anime of all time, and I will prove it by highlighting all the greatest moments from each episode. Episode 1 Huh? Am I dying? Oh well, my life was basically over anyway. <sighs> I wish I could have at least lost my virginity. <laughs> right off the bat, the dying main character shows he got his priorities straight. He doesn't have stupid regrets about not achieving a thing in his life or making people around him suffer. That's beta thinking. Instead, he is concerned about not being able to get laid, because he knows what a man's purpose in life is. And what's even better, this regret sets the theme for his entire story, which is what makes it so inspiring, especially for the young male audience. Oh, her tits are huge. Blah 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 blah. What language is that? Wait, where am I? This isn't a hospital? What the hell is he doing? I'm seriously injured. Still, she's gorgeous. Is she European? If you leave yourself that open, I might cop a feel. Eh? Uh. It's good to see that even though the protagonist has been a sociophobic shut-in for 20 years, he's not afraid to grope a woman he just saw for the first time in his life. To make it better, he is surrounded by three complete strangers all staring at him, and he's completely unfazed. What a chad. Some might say he should be petrified to fit his backstory, but that's just obviously silly. Another good thing to mention is how he's able to think complex thoughts like a grown-up while having the brain of a newborn. But this is only natural, because it is fantasy, and fantasy is nothing like real life. <laughs> <laughs> Lilia the maid. She's wonderfully endowed. <laughs> it's refreshing to see a protagonist who is not holding back and is just doing whatever the fuck he wants. Especially if what he wants is to sniff someone's used underwear and then wear it on his face in front of the owner. I can't wait to see what happens later down the line when he grows up and gets actual power over people. Also, if this is the hero of the story, I wonder what the villains are like. I can't imagine. Maybe someone who hates fun? Like, there are two ways to activate magic. Incantations and magic circles. But incantations dominate the mainstream right now. Etc. I call a refreshing burbling stream here and now. What a ball. Bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. One more try. It's like practicing combos in a fighter. Concentrate, picture it over and over in your head, then actually do it. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Ha! Hey, what a twist! He just established you need to use either incantations or magic circles, and so far he only tried using magic once via an incantation, and it was a success. So you would think he would continue using incantations, since they are actually in the book and they have been proven to work. Well, fuck you, Rudius is a giga chat who doesn't care about stupid concepts like cause and effect. He just starts imagining random shit in his head after making a gaming comparison, because gaming is based and it never fails. Welcome to Dark Souls, bitch! Attack magic is probably used in combat, and saying an incantation fast would be quicker than closing your eyes to focus. First of all, thank god there's a sword on the bed in case the dad needs to protect his family. Minus points for it being sheathed though. Secondly, it's hard to believe that even a fast incantation can be quicker than just focusing. Plus he says you need to close your eyes to focus, even though he was easily using magic with his eyes open just a minute ago. All of this is highly appreciated, because magic is supposed to be magical, and when the way it's used is too clear and consistent, it destroys the sense of wonder. Many modern fantasy writers don't know this, but the more convoluted your magic system is, the better it reads. Get it right. I think it's your bedtime now, Rudy. I'm so glad they included the sounds of his parents fucking, and not just sounds if you're watching the Blu-ray. These little details add a lot to the characterization and world building too. Without them we wouldn't know if his parents got along, or if people in this world had sex at all, which would ruin my immersion. Although, I believe they should be a bit louder. It would be very inconsiderate if two other people who live in that house couldn't hear them properly. Ara? Rudy? Did you read this book out loud? Eh? Scary. What's that look? 
Maybe kids who use magic are dangerous and get sent off to an inquisition. No, I don't want to get burned. Hmm? When your mom has a proud smile on her face, it is of course only natural to assume you did something that will get you killed or imprisoned. What if she was raising him with free access to magic books to have him develop a magical talent and then turn him into the Inquisition for a bounty? Sounds like easy money to me. That's what I call Sigma female grind set. I'm Roxy Migurdiades, Yoroshko Onegaishimas. What the hell? Forget a beard, she looks like her bush hasn't grown in yet. Maybe middle school age? Lolly, scornful gaze, unsociable. Three traits that equal perfection. I want to marry her. Jesus. Fucking Christ. Let me just repeat this great line in clear English. Lolly, scornful gaze, unsociable. Three traits that equal perfection. I want to marry her. Finally, a proper female character appears that matches all of my, um, all of MC's preferences. All pros know that matching the list of protagonists' fetishes is the based, <laughs> based, <laughs> is the best way to characterize a female character, especially in anime. Cherry on top is how Rudeus mentions her pubic hair the first time he sees her. <laughs> and you know what? Since this legendary anime is based on a legendary manga, Rudeus does marry her much later in the story. Because it's not like Roxy can prefer a different type of man or women, or see him as a friend or little brother, that just wouldn't make sense. What's great about Mushoku Tensei is that its female characters are not burdened with decision making. They are like trophies for the protagonist to take. And yes, haters, this is realistic, since the story clearly takes place in a medieval setting. And at that time, female agency hadn't been invented yet. Oh, you're the, um, home tutor? Y you're awfully, well... She's tiny. You're a fine one to talk. Maybe she's sensitive about it? I didn't mean her chest, though. I love how nothing in that exchange could bring you to a conclusion that she is specifically insecure about her chest size instead of her height, for example. But Rudeus is such a genius, he's reading her like a book, disregarding what she actually says. Also, chest size insecurity is my favorite female character trait. Too bad it's so incredibly rare. Wataboro. Mm. <laughs> what do you think? Sensei, I'll have you know that my mom worked hard to raise that tree, so I think she will get mad. Eh? <clears throat> Divine power is rich and nourishing. It offers the strength to rise again to those who have lost their strength. Hearing. Whoop. Brum. Oh, sugoi. You can use hearing magic too? Yes, up to intermediate level. Sugoi, sugoi this. No, everyone can do as much if they train properly. Heh, <laughs> she seems like a pushover. Her being a pushover and looking like a middle schooler are a great combo. This is very appealing to those viewers who find it hard to manipulate teenagers in real life. Moshoko Tensei is a fantasy anime, after all. Not just male fantasy, though. Women can also like minors. Roxy said you need incantations too, so I should say them for now. They could be important. Let the great protection of water be on the place thou seeketh. <gasps> what are you doing? Nothing, stepsister. Finally, we get a panty shot. An anime can't be a 10 out of 10 without them. And now Rudeus also casts magic not by using incantations or by focusing, but by being distracted. This is what I call... Um, character development, and it also highlights the usefulness of panty shots in a good plot. Ah, ah, ah. Huh? Cracking wood noise. Bam. Roxy san, don't use my trees as test subjects. Honestly, matakuma. I screwed up right away. Heh, <laughs> I guess I'll be fired tomorrow. You might say, wait, can she just heal the tree like she did literally two minutes ago? And it wasn't even her cast that did this in the first place. But actually, this just shows that women are stupid and forgetful, which adds to realism. Also, it's a great opportunity for Rudeus to act cool and utilize his mental advantage as a 40-year-old man in a child's body. Good shit! Damn it, I hadn't had a conversation in almost 20 years. I don't know what to say at times like this. Hmm, no, think, you've done this a lot of times. 
What would a dating sim protagonist do in this situation? Hmm. Sensei, you didn't screw up. You gained experience. <laughs> I suppose so. Thank you very much. Everyone knows that your skill in dating sims directly translates into your ability to socialize with real-life women. Also, it is quite fitting, since all women in Mishoku Tensei are NPCs for better immersion. One nitpick though, he didn't actually say dating sim. He said eroge, which literally means porn game, aka the best kind of game after Witcher 3. So he's actually using his skills from porn games, not dating sims. But that's just translators using politically correct language. The anime itself doesn't alienate true gamers, who are, coincidentally, its primary audience. <coughs> Sheesh! Okay, let's get Roxy's welcome party started. <gasps> it's nice to see a magic user who is strong enough to be a paid teacher being so surprised by simple hospitality. Plus, the fact that she's easily impressed only helps my avatar Rudeus get into her panties faster. So it is yet another character trait I can get behind. It's like a dream. A dream I'm having as I die from that crash. Even if it is, I don't care. In this world, I bet even I can make it. If I live and try as hard as everyone else, get back up when I fall and keep facing forward, then maybe I can do it. Maybe even I, maybe even a jobless, reclusive bum like me can get a do-over at life and can get serious about living. Damn, dude, Rudeus is such an inspiration. I cried three times at this scene. Now that he turned from an ugly bastard into a cute-looking kid born in a rich family that spoon-feeds him everything from daily necessities to development of his inborn magical talent, now he can finally gain some actual power over people and play out every sexual fantasy he jerked off to in his previous life. And since he's a viewer substitute, I will also feel good in the process. And don't get me wrong, it's definitely alright that he got everything handed to him. After all, it's common sense that rich kids are as likely to fail in life as poor kids. Plus, it is power fantasy, which means the protagonist has to be powerful from the very start. It's not like he can start out weak, but then work his way to becoming strong to make the subsequent wish fulfillment feel deserved and satisfying. <laughs> Lol, that's like fucking boring, bro. So, to recap the first episode, we got to see Rudeus almost succeeding to grope his mother, sniff a woman's underwear and wear it on his face in front of its owner, we got to see his parents fuck, we got to see him ponder about the pubic hair and breasts of a supposedly middle school aged girl. We and him both got to look at that girl's underwear, and he also calmed her down using a line from a porn game. Fucking based. So far, it's easily 10 out of 10. Can't wait to see episode 2. You might say, wait, can't you just heal the three? <laughs> you. <laughs>